In this video, we'll look at producing an IK chain with the HI solution and the skin modifier. There are two versions of this assembly in this file. One uses a monolithic skin mesh, and the other uses a poly mesh that's comprised of a series of separate components. If I select the first item, you'll notice in the modifier stack that there's a skin modifier placed on top of the editable poly. Once you have a skin modifier, you can add bones into the skin that will allow this mesh to be manipulated like an arm or a leg. The second version is also an editable poly with a skin modifier and bones. However, the way this mesh was built as a series of discrete elements makes it possible for the armature to be manipulated without distortion at the joints. You'll notice this if I select the HI solution that goes with either. If we manipulate the first, we will see distortion and buckling at the joints. If we select the second, you won't find the distortion buckling at the joints because these geometries have been built as a series of discrete elements. Both methods are appropriate for different kinds of architecture. It may be necessary to employ one or both of these in any kind of deployable architecture that you might build. I'll begin by walking you through the first method. The editable poly that you see here that will be used in this method is something that was originally derived from a single box where polygons were then extruded, hinged, and manipulated to produce it this Z-like shape. A dummy object was placed here what would be considered the parent end of this armature. The parent end would be analogous to say the torso or the shoulder working our way down from shoulder to elbow to wrist and hand. We'll produce a series of bones that will go inside this geometry to cause it to move like an appendage. If I go to the animation pull down and pull down to where it says bone tools, I get a dialog for bone tools. I'll use the create bones button. I'm going to begin by clicking somewhere near the dummy object. I'll then proceed by clicking at each subsequent joint and at the end and then finally right clicking. You should see a total of four bones here in this Z shape. The first, second, third, and then the fourth or terminal bone always looks like this little knuckle. Next, we're going to reposition this set of bones so that it's aligned with the skin that we'll be using. Select all the bones in the plan view and use the move tool and relocate the bones so that they're centered up with my poly mesh. Once there, we may decide we need to make further refinements to exactly how the bones are placed within the mesh. So before setting up an HI solution, double check to make sure all your bones are exactly where you want them to be. If you want to reposition bones, use the bone edit mode, select individual bone elements where you could use move and rotate to reposition bone joints. If we're satisfied with the placement of the bones in both plan and section, I'll go to the select and link and click and drag from the parentmost bone over to my dummy object. The dummy object will then provide a handle for me to manipulate and push around this assembly elsewhere in the scene. One other link will be necessary. Once we've placed our HI solution, we'll link the handle of the HI solution back to the dummy object as well. This will allow us to pick the whole thing up like a suitcase. To add the HI solution, we're going to go to the animation pull down menu, pull down to where we find IK solvers, HI solver. We'll drag all the way out to the most junior element of the assembly, click and select. What you should find is a crosshair now located at that position and a kind of rubber band like form that's linking all of these elements together. If we select this and move, you should see that the bone assembly now works as one unified system. I'll now select the HI solution terminal and we will use the select and link tool and click and drag. You should see the cursor changes and link it back to our dummy object. Now that the entire bone assembly and the solution that controls the behavior of the bone assembly have been linked to the dummy, the dummy can be used as a handle to pick up this assembly and move it elsewhere in the scene. Without the handle, a bone assembly and solution will remain pinned to the ground at the location where it was created. Next, we will select the geometry that's to be used as the skin around these bones. I'll select that editable poly and go to the modifier stack. 
Inside the modifier stack, I'm going to find the skin modifier. Once the skin modifier has been selected, we can then introduce the bones that comprise this armature into that skin. If I pull down to where I find it says add bones, we should then get the pop-up. You can filter out the elements in the scene, isolating just the bones. We'll select our four bones. And by the way, it's best to name your bones so that you know exactly what bones go with what arm. We can now select the anchor point solution at the end of this. The skin is being manipulated and repositioned by virtue of the bones placement. Should you need to change the influence of bones on the overall skin, select the editable poly and select uh, some bone, let's say bone one, and click on the edit envelope button. Once you do that, you'll see this capsule that represents the impact of that bone on the poly mesh and select the handles that surround this particular gizmo and we can increase or decrease the impact that a bone has on some portion of the mesh. It may in fact be possible to cause this bone to deform or reposition the entire mesh simply by stretching this capsule out. You can then move through the chain and then individually manipulate a capsule that represents the influence of any one bone on the mesh at that location. If we're not careful, this bone will be drawn into very irregular alignments as you see here. So it is occasionally necessary to constrain the movement of various joints in a bone assembly. This is done by selecting bones inside the assembly, going to the hierarchy tab, where you will see the joints that comprise this particular location, and we can turn on and off axes of rotation as appropriate for those joints. Um, many joints inside an arm or a leg have multiple ranges of motion. They're not limited simply to one axis. Um, that's why we have all of these turned on at the moment. If we were to get this to represent a more mechanical kind of behavior, we might say in this particular joint, we only want movement, rotational movement in the z-axis, in which case we would turn off rotational movement in the other two. The same could be then done for subsequent bones in the assembly until you constrain this geometry to do just what you like. In the second example, you'll notice once again that I have an editable poly. In fact, this is a series of editable polys. However, I want to join these into one mesh. It doesn't matter which object is used, but one of them needs to be selected. With the uh, senior most element in my future assembly selected, I will then move to the polygon edit mode and scroll down to where I find attach. If I select the attach button, I can then go out and manually click on the other geometries that I want to add into this composition. Now all three have been incorporated into one single edible poly mesh. However, the individual elements can always be selected by using the element level of the edit polygon. You'll notice that makes it possible for me to select the individual items that comprise this assembly while still allowing them to be contained within one large mesh. This is not the same as a group. Keep that in mind. I'll next proceed by adding the bones just as we had in the previous example. We'll go to the animation pull down, find the bone tools, we'll use the create bones, and once again we'll proceed from the senior most to the junior most um, end of this appendage. I'm going to begin somewhere near the dummy object, click and drag out to what would be the pin joint on this um, armature here, and then click um, at the subsequent pin joint, and then click at the end of the last leg of this, and then right click to terminate. And once again I have four bones that comprise this assembly. Now before adding any HI solution, we want to select and move it into place so that it aligns with the poly mesh that it's going to be inside of. And once again, should you choose to, you can refine the position of the bones by using the bone edit mode. Next I'm going to use the animation IK solver HI solver. We need to select the senior most bone here in this assembly, animation HI solver, and we'll click out here at the junior most element of this assembly, 
And once we've done that, we can confirm that these are joined by selecting and moving the HI solver um, axes out here. And next I want to attach both the senior bone and the solution back here to the dummy object so we can use it as a handle to pick up this armature. So I'll select my senior most bone. I'm going to select the select and link tool, click and drag to my dummy object. And then let's go ahead and select the crosshairs here of the HI solution. We'll once again use the select and link tool and we're going to click and drag from the end to our dummy object. And once we've done that, you should note that if we grab the dummy object, the whole bone assembly, including the HI solution, can be moved around and placed elsewhere in the scene. And then lastly, we want to add the mesh to this bone assembly. So I've selected my um, edible poly mesh and I will once again add the skin modifier here by pulling down to where I find skin. We're going to add a new set of bones at this time. If uh, you haven't done so already, you should name all of your bones so that you can easily find them. You'll note right now if I go looking for them, I see lots of bones in here. Which, which bones am I looking for exactly? So naming bones is very helpful. Now the important difference between this method and the uniform mesh method of adding geometries to a series of bones with the HI solution is the way in which the mesh is selected and modified in its envelope. I've got bone number five selected here, which is the first bone of my assembly. I've turned on edit envelopes and I then clicked on the vertice checkbox. If I scroll down below, I will then find that weight properties is lit up and it makes it possible for me to um, add a value. I will click on some portion of the geometry in my first element here and you should see all the vertices that comprise that first geometry light up. If those are lit up, I can click on the rigid checkbox and type in the value of one. What this does is forces this geometry to be absolutely assigned to this bone and the geometry will move around with the bone, will not buckle, bend, or distort. To manipulate the subsequent geometries in this fashion, I need to select the next bone in the assembly. With the next bone in the assembly selected, once again I need to be certain that my Edit Envelopes button is turned on, the checkbox for vertices is turned on, and you'll notice right now that uh, I can put in a weight value, but this is grayed out. So I need to select some vertex on the side of the geometry in question. You should see that it lights up. So this next element here in the assembly is now going to be forced onto the next bone, which is bone number six. We need to check rigid and then type in a value of one. Enter. And then finally, we'll move to bone seven. And once on bone seven, I'm going to confirm once again, edit envelopes, vertices is checked, and I need to select some portion of the geometry to cause it to light up. We see all of the vertices that make up this uh, piece have now been picked. We can select rigid and type in a value of one and enter. We should now see that if we grab the um, IK solution that this assembly moves and you'll also notice there is no distortion of any of the geometries here. The box is essentially linked exactly to the bone um, that is inside of it in each case. So it's important to make sure that the geometries as you build them allow for any rotation or sliding that would be necessary as a part of an assembly like this. Just as in previous examples, we can also constrain the amount of rotation and sliding that go at each of these joints by opening up the IK tab inside the hierarchy area, selecting a bone, and then making various joints sliding or rotational active, inactive, or limiting the amount of rotation necessary.